Folks, our first on-demand workshop, How to Become a Coffee Consultant, is now available for you to learn at your own pace for just 50 euros, and it comes with a certificate upon completion. Go to mapperforward.coffee forward slash workshops or click the link in the show notes for more details. Support this podcast by supporting our sponsors. Welcome to the Daily Coffee Pro by Map Up Forward Friends. I'm your host, Lee Safar, and this is unfortunately our final episode with Marianella from Farmers Project uh, in Costa Rica. We are talking about direct trade from the perspective of the coffee producer. Now, as we moved through this series, we were talking about financing. Marinella, something that I wanted to ask you as we begin this discussion about the successful side of direct trade and, and what success looks like for the coffee producer who engages in direct trade. I want to ask, does direct trade mean that the producer gets paid more? Yes, Lee, this I think is the goal. Mm -hmm. And uh, in our case, as Farmers Project has been the reality. Mm -hmm. It also took us three years to get to the green. We we really right. invested for three years to uh, be able to connect with roasters that were willing to pay not not fair trade prices, way above sometimes two times, three times fair trade. Amazing. Uh, because of quality too, and because they knew they had the potential to sell those beautiful micro lots to their to their community. Mm -hmm. um, so yes, in my experience, direct trade is also direct income and positive income. Yes. So if it's real direct trade, of course. If it's real direct trade. And folks, if you this is the first episode of the series that you're listening to, go back to the beginning of the series so that you can understand well, what we mean by real direct trade. Now, as we talk about success and, and we know that a success marker for direct trade is that the producer makes more money. What are some of the other success markers if there is going to be a successful uh, relationship between producers and roasters when it comes to direct trade? That's a great question. Uh, I would say probably the most important is to have a long-term vision because if you're a producer that is already focusing on quality so that you actually have the demand for your micro lots, you're going to need a buyer that is committing to buying that for the long term. Mm. It's exhausting for a producer for to, to host uh, for example, visitors or potential buyers that come to origin to our farm. And really what they're doing is cherry picking, literally, <laughs> like like only yeah. one pop. They only want, oh, are you doing geisha or are you doing a hybrid? And are you doing an exotic kind of processing? Are you, you know, you, it, and, and or what fermentation, what's the latest, that kind of latest fad type of micro lot, uh, and, and, and that kind of buyer is not a steady profitable buyer for any direct trade mm. uh, producer. For us, we're, we're really looking for that long-term vision and that long-term commitment from both sides. It takes both sides. When we first started Farmers Project and my husband and I shared the idea with our friend farmers, we said there are two things that we're going to do. And we want to tell you honestly, and of course, since I'm from Costa Rica, I could say this. One, we need to, this is a team. This is, you know, we're forming a team to go through this journey, good, bad, and ugly, risk and reward all together. And two, no mañana, mañana. We're doing it the American way, not the Costa Rican way. And again, I wasn't offending anybody because I'm from Costa Rica. And yeah. you all know what I meant. And I said, we will deliver what we promised. And that's why when we first invited our 12 closest farmer friends, we ended up with two the first year. Mm. Now there is there there is a line of people that literally, and I'm not being you know stuck up by saying this, but every year I have so many phone calls saying, can we be a part of Farmers Project? Because now that's they awesome. see the train moving, right? <laughs> but when we were trying to get the train off the station, most people are like, well, I don't know if I can commit my coffee 
like, like if I have a buyer that comes to my farm and just offers me a great price right there and there, I'm, it's my coffee. I'm going to give it up. And I said, well, thanks for telling us that. Because if we, we are committing to a roaster that we're going to deliver a pallet of uh, Bijasarchi honey, we will deliver a pallet of Bijasarchi honey from my farm, from your farm, whoever committed. So that is a, a must, a requirement of successful direct trade is that mutual commitment for the long term. So it sounds like producers, if there is a successful direct trade relationship, what they get out of it is more money they mm -hmm. get a great community, mm -hmm. what else are they getting out of this? Oh my God, the sense of pride, Lee, the sense of pride. Uh, when we first started, if, if if I hope you come to Costa Rica and I hope so meet, too. meet all of us it, because- I would love well, to. Well, you're always welcome. The Thank gates you. are open. Thank you. <laughs> um, when we first started Farmers Project, uh, I would say everybody's second, third, or fourth generation in coffee. I'm first generation because I was crazy and got into coffee out of my dream, right? But yeah. uh, nobody in my family is in coffee. But um, the first thing was the older generation were totally skeptical of direct trade. It's like, how can you risk it? Why? You don't know the people on the other side. You don't know what's going to happen in that journey. You don't know what if you're going to get paid or not. And, you know, we talked previously mm. about that that whole uh, unknown and, that, and the barrier to entry being a barrier to information by right. set up by the system as is you know the mm -hmm. colonialism of the system is keep yeah. the producers in the dark right so the older generation have been in the dark too long and they're like are you don't you know don't don't do that are you kidding me and um for me it's been emotional and for the farmers has been this sense of pride because they were able three of them actually had to convince their parents, their father, because usually it's the father, the boss, right? To let them play, quote unquote, with a small lot to try direct trade. So they actually convinced <laughs> the father to allow them maybe <laughs> 50 bags of coffee to test the waters with direct trade. And for me to go back with the bags of coffee of the roasters that send the bags of coffee and they send the, the merch and the gear and the stuff back to the farmers that they're friends with because they've been to the farm. Then those parents look at that and they're like, wow. And I have seen the older parents walk the farm with all of us, you know, like, you know, when, when we have visitors and they're so proud and they wow. see their last name on that bag and they realize wow somebody really showcases my last name my farm wow, the has dignity in that coffee. huh oh it's one of the best things it's it's uh my i i tell people don't get in caught into coffee uh for money uh but you can get into coffee for beautiful rewarding emotional moments that's that's my biggest paycheck when i see that that pride in like, mm. wow, my coffee matters and my coffee is a star in the United States. You know, people are showcasing it Damn. with branding and beautiful <laughs> displays. It's awesome. It's amazing. Uh, what a beautiful way to end a beautiful series. Marinella, I can't thank you enough. Please, please, please come back. Thank you, Lee. Thank you so much for having me, for allowing me to lend my voice to the producers and uh, thank you for all the amazing work you do thank to you. share the reality with your audience. Thank you. Please tell people where they can find Farmers Project on um, social media. Okay. At uh, Instagram, we're at cafeconamor.cr. That's the name of my farm, but also mm -hmm. on farmersproject-cr.com. And um so, yeah, so we hope to see more people on Instagram following us and, and meeting more people through uh, uh, th that really care about the, the farmers. We're, we're always all about relationships and friendships. Beautiful. And folks, please head to the show notes. You'll find all the links there. Marinella, can I get you to sign off Peace, Love and Peanut Butter for our final time for this series? 
Uh, yes. Uh, send in everyone a big hug. Peace, love, and peanut butter. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Have an amazing rest of your day. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in, friends. There are two ways you can support this podcast. Firstly, become a paid member of our YouTube channel. Secondly, you can join our Patreon for as little as $3 a month. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video before you leave and check the show notes for more information. Now, this is what you should check out next.